Angela Kim from TheSquishyMonster.com and today I'm bringing you a quintessential southern treat. The very first time I had hummingbird cake, I was about 11 or 12 and I remember sinking my teeth into this delectable sweet, which I thought was just a fancy banana bread, which I found later isn't quite far from the truth. But this one is studded with fresh fruits and nuts and it's topped with a fluffy mound of cream cheese frosting and this one is adorned by an edible pineapple flower. The very first thing I want to do is peel and slice my pineapple. So we're going to make these edible dried flowers that are really, really impressive to look at, but they couldn't be easier. So we're just going to peel the sky, thinly slice them, and arrange them flat on a baking sheet, and just slowly and lowly dry them out. The most important step here is to remove as many eyes and blemishes as possible because it won't make for as an attractive flower when you dry it out and make those flowers later. So now all you have to do is thinly slice the pineapple as thinly as you can go, like that, and we're just going to arrange them just flat on a baking sheet. I'm going to use some Silpat, you can use some parchment, and just slowly dry them at a very low temperature. This next step is important as well. I've just flatly lined all of my pineapple slices on either some um, paper towels or what I have here is just a cut up old t-shirt because I like to reuse them. And I want to lightly sprinkle with a little bit of salt. Not to salt them per se, but just to bring out that extra excess moisture. The drier your flowers will be, the faster it takes, and then the thinner they are, the faster it will dry out in the oven as well. So go as thin as you can. Um, the flowers will be more vibrant and it'll curl better and dry faster and just be really pretty and delicate if you slice them as thin as you can. So just leave them like this for about 10 or 15 minutes and then blot off any extra moisture and then pop them into the oven and it takes, depending on how thin or thick your slices are, about an hour but the more important thing is to flip them and rotate them halfway through the drying process. For the dry ingredients for the hummingbird cake, I've already weighed out my unbleached flour and to that I'm going to sprinkle in some baking soda and some fine salt. I like to use fine salt when I bake, which is table salt, instead of kosher salt because it kind of dissolves easier. When choosing bananas, which is going to go into my wet ingredients, you want to choose some that are freckled and speckled, which means that they're ripe and really naturally sweet. So I'm going to mash these together with some brown sugar so they get really syrupy and caramely and some spices, and then we're going to slip that into our wet ingredients. To begin our wet ingredients, I've just mashed some bananas and I leave them pretty chunky because as they bake, they become part of the batter and it gets really nice and soft and moist, I love that about bananas. And so to this, I'm gonna add in some brown sugar, and remember, you can make your own with some unsulfured molasses and some granulated, just regular old sugar. So, on top of that, I'm going to add in some of my spices, and I love using whole spices, they're so much more pungent and fragrant that way. So some nutmeg, and then a little bit of cinnamon. And if you don't have whole spices, definitely you can just use some powdered already finely ground up. Pineapple is another one of those ingredients that will be blended into this cake. So I had some leftover pineapples from earlier, slicing them into flowers. So I just freshly blitzed them in a food processor and I drained it and I made my own crushed pineapple, but of course you can just use the canned variety. And so I'm going to add all of this into my wet ingredients. So in goes the pineapple. And then coconut oil would be phenomenal in this. A splash of vanilla. And then a room temperature egg. Now it's just a matter of mixing the two together and I'm just sprinkling in some toasted chopped pecans. And it, this is completely optional, but the very first time I ever had it, they were in there. So I'm going to recreate that memory. So I just want to kind of sprinkle it into the dry mixture so it gets suspended rather than sink to the bottom. Just mix it like that with some clean fingers, of course. And then just begin streaming in my wet and mixing it together. Just make sure you don't overmix. That's the most important thing here. 
Here I have a cupcake tin. It's not greased or anything like that, but you want to carefully place the dried pineapples into the cups so they dry into a natural cupcake or a natural flower shape. I've just increased the oven temperature to bake these at and I'm going to fill each one with some of this batter. When your cupcakes have cooled, you can frost and decorate and I've just got some cream cheese frosting and if you'd like to see that tutorial, just click on this link. And then on the top, I can just place one of those edible pineapple flowers and they're ready to serve. I just think this is so adorable and you can actually eat it too, which is great. Mmm. Mmm. It kind of actually ends up tasting like fruit leather. Love that. And then beneath it all is this moist, fluffy hummingbird cake with that cream cheese frosting. Mmm. Mmm. This is so fresh and so soft and tender that crumb just melts in your mouth. And then it can't be bad with that cream cheese frosting, which I want to put it on everything. <laughs> I just hope you guys give this a try. And try this southern treat, this hummingbird cake. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this video, like, thumbs up, subscribe, so I know to make more. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. This is Angela Kim from TheSquishyMonster.com, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.